We have a situation with uh, the etherists. A lot of these people have um, sent me questions and comments. I'm not going through all going to go through all of them because there were too many. That's that's the issue. But I, hopefully today I'm going to answer a lot of their questions. They're going to see some of their questions being answered there, or at least what the issues are. Okay. Hopefully they have enough intelligence to understand what's being put in front of them. Okay. And the first thing you need to know about an ether is, is he's just pretty much like a um, electric universer, a thunderbolter. <laughs> And uh, what is a thunderbolt or an electric universe? Well, he's a person who explains gravity, for example, you know, with electricity. He thinks uh, gravity is really electricity or some form of electricity. In fact, they do not believe or accept gravity at all. They say even gravity is ultimately an electrical phenomenon. They will all say that. That's in their books. That's in their presentations. It's up to you to locate all that. But uh, if you look there, uh, through there, through the videos, through the books, that's what you will find. Electricity is Gravity is electricity. Electricity is gravity. There is no difference. In fact, they don't think gravity exists at all. It's all electricity. Okay. And uh, what's the problem with that? Well, the problem with that is they never defined the word electricity. Okay. And so here's uh, we have this electric universe, and he says, uh, yeah, it's um, electricity. But what he will never tell you is what electricity is. He cannot define the word electricity. Okay. This is the issue. I went through that a couple videos ago. Okay. So the issue is these people have no idea what electricity is. In fact, even worse, uh, later on they tell you it's the flow of electrons and what they're using is the quantum model of you know the planetary model of the atom they're saying the atom is this little ball in the center called the proton and a little bead known as the electron that goes around it or somewhere around the proton somewhere in the region an orbital or whatever and the way the electric universe visualizes electricity is the flow of beads this electron bead that goes from atom to atom okay so they say it's the flow of electrons, but then they say it's current, and then they talk about the flow of current, and so on. So they have all these contradictions. Their language is not correct. Not, it, their language is not precise at all. And the etherists are pretty much in the same boat. Here's an etherist, okay, and this is what they believe. And they believe that, you know, if you ask them, what is the ether, they cannot tell you what the ether is. They have no clue whatsoever, okay? Uh, some think of it as a fluid, some think of it as a bunch of particles in the background, or some think of it as the same thing as space. Some say that, no, the ether is within space. And so we have a lot of problems with these people because they never uh, tell, can tell you exactly what the ether is. Okay? And so that's where we start with the ethers, that they, they have problems defining, defining or pointing, because you have one choice or the other. You either define the ether, the word ether, or you tell us what it is by pointing, you know, giving us a little picture of the ether so that we know what you're talking about. We need that what. Okay, what is a what? An object, a thing. So if it's a thing, we want you to point to it. Point to an image, to to a statue, something in front of us, something we can see, okay? So that we can follow your presentation, okay? We can visualize. We don't even need to see it, but you got to describe it in such a way that we can visualize it, okay? And what these people do, they don't do that. They want to define, on the one hand, a talk about an object, they use it as an object on the other, and that's not allowed in physics, okay, not in, not in science. Okay, so um, um, here we have some of the uh, valid points that etherists make, we have, to, we have to mention that, and the first point that they make is that light requires a medium, and in that sense, uh, I'm all with them, 100% you know, with them, yeah, light requires a medium. If you're going to talk about the traveling of light, the speed of light, something traveling requires an object because the definition of motion is two or more locations of an object. So you have to have an object. That means it has to have shape. Okay? The object has to have shape. That means that you cannot use a concept and say, I'm going to make a concept travel. Now, you can't make love tra uh, travel. You can't make intelligence travel. You can't make energy travel, for example. All these things cannot travel. Okay? It's got to be an object. And for that, you got to point to the object. you got to say, look, that's a cat. And now I'm going to show you how the cat travels. That we can all understand. Okay? But you cannot have a concept travel. Okay? And some people don't understand that much. And uh, so etherists say you need a, a, some kind of object, uh, some medium, and light has got to have that medium there. Okay? In other words, light has to be something. It can't be a nothing that's traveling. And that's good. Uh, but uh, we have a little bit of a problem because we have this uh, issue between ocean and fish. Uh, uh, that's the problem with the etherists, and they confuse the ocean with the uh, fish. Here's an example, okay, here's a little fish, okay, and the blue stuff is the ocean. Fish is the orange one, right, goldfish maybe. Okay, no problem, we all understand that. So light can be the fish, okay, but what's the issue? The issue is some of these people say that 
uh, light does not need a medium through which to travel. Okay, well, uh, that's like saying uh, the fish doesn't need an ocean through which to travel. That's not a problem. Okay, let's get rid of the ocean. We have no problem with, with getting rid of the ocean. But if the fish is going to travel, it's going to do some traveling. Hopefully the fish is a physical object. Okay, so we don't need to talk about the ocean, the medium through which the fish travels. Okay, because if you go in there and you say, look, um, you know, um, uh, for example, uh, the fish is nothing. In other words, the fish itself is not a physical object. Then you, you would end up with something like this. You have ocean only. <laughs> uh, can you see the uh, fish traveling there? You know, I mean, why can't you see the fish traveling? Because you don't have an object. So you, you need to have at least uh, an object if you're going to talk about light doing any kind of traveling. And in this sense, the ethers are correct. You know, you need that fish there if, you, if you're going to talk about light being something that travels through an ocean. So the ocean, the question is whether the ether is the fish that is vibrating there, you know, the, the wave, perhaps a transverse wave. Uh, I don't care if that fish vibrates up and down, no problem, but that's got to be different than the ocean. You cannot say the ocean and the fish are the same thing, and the fish is just a vibration of the ocean, locally of the ocean. Okay, That's where the problem is with, with these etherists. The other issue we should mention is that, you know, they're correct in saying that the establishment, you know, the mathematicians, um, they didn't really ever get rid of the ether. And in this sense, the etherists are correct. Uh, what the mathematicians did is replace the ether with space-time, with uh, the false vacuum. Uh, fields, they like to use fields, and they say it's the vibration of the field. Yeah, uh, that's a way of cheating. They're saying well, it's the ether, but we don't call it that. In fact, um, uh, Robert McLaughlin, um, Robert Laughlin, uh, no, uh, Nobel Prize, uh, he said, you know, um, we never got rid of the ether, but we don't call it that because it's taboo. So in that sense, the etherists are correct. Uh, the mathematicians never got rid of the ether, okay? And they just gave it all these fancy names like space-time and false vacuum, but they never got rid of the ether, okay? And so in that sense, they're correct. But again, we have to distinguish between the fish and the ocean. And that's a problem the etherists have, a, a lot of them have problems with. They can't distinguish between the fish and the ocean. You cannot say a fish needs an ocean to travel through. We don't care about that. Get rid of the ocean completely. But hopefully the fish, if it's going to do any traveling, even if on land or in the air and, or out there in space, hopefully the, the fish is a physical object, is a thing, is a medium itself. Okay. So saying that uh, light does not need a medium through which to travel, it's irrational. Okay? Because we don't care about the medium through which it travels. We care about light itself. That had better be a something if it's going to do any kind of traveling. Because motion requires an object. You can't have motion without an object. Otherwise, what's moving? Okay, so this is the issue. Physics, first and foremost, begins with objects. You need an object to do physics. Okay, so what are the problems with the ether? Well, here's a rundown of it, okay? Ah, if I can get it up here. Okay, this is a summary of some of the problems that the etherists have and some of the action items that we require of etherists, anyone defending the ether, okay? Is it an object or a concept? It can't be both. God can be a human, you know, with a magic wand, you know, the, I'm God sometimes, you know, and he can make the universe, waves his magic wand, creates, you know, the universe, no problem. But God's an object, has to be a thing. In fact, uh, Michelangelo drew, drew uh, painted, you know, God, Sistine Chapel up there. Okay, but if God is a concept such as love, intelligence, well, then we can't draw a God. We can't make a picture of God, okay? And so either God is a concept or God is an object. God cannot be both. When those people who say he's both or none, all they're doing is evading the question. That's all they're doing. Okay? So God has to be an object or a concept, and the same thing for the ether. Ether cannot be both. Either uh, uh, ether is a thing, okay, and you point to it and you name it, and you say, that's the ether there. I'm pointing it like you would point to a chair or a rock or a tree. Or ether is a concept, and you say, well, it's like intelligence. It's like energy. It's like a field. You know, You can use any of those because all those are concepts. Then you cannot use it as an object. You cannot use the ether as a paddle uh, in your, in your uh, dissertation. You cannot say the ether vibrates because there, you haven't defined it as a thing. You can say, um, you know, uh, a rope vibrates up and down, a string, uh, you know, a standing wave. You can create it with a string. But you cannot have a concept and move it up and down because what are we staring at? What's the concept that's vibrating? Okay, so this is the issue. you got to determine once and for all if the ether is an object or a concept. That's the first problem we have. Okay? And here's, um, here it is. Okay? Either ether is a wave, that uh, shiny thing you see on the left, 
that's uh, going to move up and down, but here we show it in a single picture so that we can point to it and say, that's the ether. That's what the ether looks like. Okay, so now the ether is an object we can identify. It looks something like that. You don't like that? Put your picture of the ether there so that we can see it in the same way. Otherwise, define it. And in which case, it's not a thing, and you cannot use it as a thing in your dissertation. You say the ether is a continuous fluid, blah, 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 whatever you want to define it as. We don't care. Okay? So either you define it or you make a picture of it. That's the only way to present this in science. So you have to choose. Okay? You can't have both. You can't say, well, it's an object. I can't point to it. I can't show it to you. Uh, uh, but let me do my theory. And you can't do it the other way around either. You can't say, well, it's a concept, like a spirit, like an energy, like, uh, you know, um, I don't know, a field or a wave. Uh, but, but uh, you know, uh, I'm going to move it. Now, you can't move concepts. So it's black or white, yes or no, on or off. You can't have it both ways, okay? And these people want it both ways. They want to define it as a concept, like the electric universes. They define electricity, then they move electricity. They say the current flows. No, the current cannot flow because the current was already flowing. It was already a dynamic concept. Okay, so here we have um, uh, another issue, which is, um, whether the ether is equal to space or is not equal to space. Is space and ether, are these two words synonyms, perfect synonyms? Is space ether and is uh, ether space? Or is ether contained within space? Like if space were some kind of um, container, okay? So we have to distinguish between ether equal to space and ether not equal to space. And we have a big problem there with the ethers because you have all these ethers and some say, well, it's equal to space and the other people say it's not equal to space. And here we have the two versions, okay? The one on the upper left-hand corner there, uh, the wave. Uh, you know, uh, you look at that and you say, well, space is the black stuff and ether is the bright stuff. Okay, we all understand that. In that case, ether is not equal to space. Whatever you put there, we're saying these are two different things. Otherwise, if you say the ether is space, you got the situation on the bottom left where um, all of space and ether is the same thing. I painted it uh, light with a light color. You can paint it black if you want, I don't care. But the point is there's no difference in that case between ether and space. And one of the issues there, again, that you have to be aware of is that if you take this uh, bottom option, you gotta tell me whether space is finite or infinite, okay? If space is finite, it's an object, and in which case you have to um, you know, show me what's, uh, where it stops and what continues. You gotta tell me what the white stuff is that gives shape to space, which gives shape to ether. In other words, ether has space as a backdrop and space has something else as a backdrop. You got to tell me what that white stuff is. Okay. That's the issue. You can't, you can't even, you can't even begin your presentation until you solve these problems. Okay. On the other hand, if you say that space is infinite, okay, if that's what you're going to use, uh, well, then we have a problem because now you're, you're essentially telling me that space is not a physical object. Then it's not a container. You got to tell me what is space. Okay, if it's not a container, it's not a thing because it doesn't. You can't tell me what's outside of it giving shape to space. Then now you got to tell me what space is in the alternative. What is space? You got to define a word or tell me what it is. In fact, you can't tell me that what it is anymore because you already said it doesn't have anything outside of it. Okay, it's not finite. So okay, so if it's infinite, what is space in your theory? Before, if it serves as a backdrop to the ether. Okay. Uh, again, you got to de resolve these issues before you tell me any of your theory. So you got to spend two years on the ether before you begin your theory. We don't care about your theory for sure. Five seconds will do. We want you to spend two years on the word ether. That's the question. That's the issue. Okay. Okay. So um, the other issue is whether the space is made out of a single piece or out of particles. I mean, what's the situation here? Okay. Uh, are you saying that space is uh, made of uh, continuous? Or people would like to use the word contiguous, you know. Uh, are we saying it's made out of a single piece? That's the question. Don't, don't use any other words. Single piece or made out of particles. And here you have uh, space with um, the ether within space, okay. And as you can see, it's moving. So if it's flexible, are you saying that it's made out of pieces, out of parts? Is that ether made of parts? Okay. And one of the problems these people have uh, with this is that, because I, you, I mean, if you, can, if you want to tell me that, it's made of a single piece, but it's flexible. I have no problem. But the important thing here is that the ether is that whole shebang, the whole bright spot, the whole thing that is throughout space. And the earth is somewhere in there and some in, in within that bright spot. Okay. 
So the ether serves as a backdrop to everything, okay? And it's this thing that's everywhere around us, okay? That's how you have to visualize this. But what happens? These people say light is the vibration of the ether, and what they do is they don't vibrate the whole shebang, the whole ether of the entire universe. What they do, they want to vibrate something locally like that. See, they say, see, that's the ether. It's a vibration of the ether. No, that's not the vibration of the ether. The vibration of the ether is the big guy. Okay, that's the vibration of the ether. If you're going to say that there's a portion of the ether that vibrates, now we're talking about something else. We're not talking about the ether. You can't call that little wave there at the ether. Okay, now you got to say, look, there's a little tiny region of the uh, ether that is vibrating, meaning the ether is made of parts. Okay, because now you've chopped a little segment off the big uh, ether, and now you're moving that little ether and saying light is that little ether that you see there, the, the transverse wave or whatever, the, you know, the little worm there that you see. So we have to establish what the ether is. Is the vibration of the, is the whole universe vibrating? Is that what you're saying when you say that the ether vibrates? Or are you referring to a small portion, a region of the ether, in which case you're not talking about the ether? Now you got to use a different term because you cannot confuse the little uh, segment there, the little region that's vibrating. You cannot confuse that with a big region that's vibrating across the universe. If you're going to say that uh, light is the vibration of the ether, that's the big guy. And hopefully that's not light. Okay, because you wouldn't be able to explain anything with that. And if you're saying the vibration is, uh, you know, this whole thing there, well, uh, well I don't know. Uh, if, if that's light, uh, you got a problem because you cannot tell me why I have a little bit of light here and another guy has a little bit of light over there. And you're saying those are the vibration of the whole shebang of the entire universe? No, what you're saying there is that it's, locally it's vibrating, meaning that this big shebang that you call the ether is made of little parts. That's what you're implying. That's, that's the logic there. You got to fix that. You got to tell me which one is the ether. Okay. And again, does the ether move? You know, I mean, you know, <laughs> uh, I think I've got it here. Yeah. Uh, well, no, these are this. The, these are the particles of ether. You know, if, if you're saying that the ether is made of smaller parts, okay, then that's what you're saying, what you see on the right. Otherwise, if you're saying it's uh, on the left, and again, we only took a picture of it, you know, snapshot. So we're seeing a single frame of the ether. We're not seeing it moving at all. We're just saying this is what the ether is. That's when it's going to be vibrating. And so the question is, you know, is the ether made of parts? Does it vibrate? Does it vibrate locally? Does it vibrate only across the universe? What is light if you say that, the, that it's the vibration of the ether? You got to identify the ether without any doubt. And that's where all these people fail because they don't pay attention to these details these questions they don't even research them they, they don't uh try to rationalize them at all okay okay so uh, again is uh the ether a region of the ether that's not the ether then you know you, you're talking about something else then and again if the whole ether is sh shaking with respect to what you know if it's vibrating or whatever so uh, all i can tell you is that um the ether has all kinds of problems and it's the uh, what we call the hypothesis, which is the problem. Uh, your assumption, what you're saying that the ether is. You're, you're, you begin your presentation by presenting the objects. And you're saying, this is the ether. Okay, tell me what it is. Show me the ether, point to it, and say, this is the ether. That's what I'm going to use throughout my dissertation. Then we can follow your, your presentation. We can understand you. Okay? If you instead decide to define the ether and say, look, th this is my definition of the word ether, fine. Then you can't use it as an object. Concepts are defined objects we point to and name we visualize so that someone can follow our presentation and know the difference between an elephant and force. Okay? Force is not an elephant. You can't say the, the force moved the wall. No, no, the elephant moved the wall, not the force. Okay? And so you don't use words, don't use concepts as objects. And if you're going to, again, define the ether as a concept, you can't use it as an object. All these issues have to be taken care of before you begin your presentation.